Today I'm going to take a popular online recipe for banana pancakes and kind of just alter it a bit. So the recipe I'll be using is this one from allrecipes.com, banana pancakes. It's a very straightforward Scotch pancake or American pancake style recipe. And we will follow this recipe more or less, but I'm just going to make a few changes that I think will be nice. And based on ingredients that I happen to have available to me right now. So we want two bananas mashed, and I'll start that first because that's probably the easiest thing to do. So these bananas are really about as minimally ripe as I would accept a ripe banana. I tend to prefer them with a few little dark spots on them, but these will do. They do smell nice and sweet and aromatic. So I'm going to mash those. I'm just going to use pastry blender for that because I think that will be ideal for chopping them up and mashing them. Yep, that was actually very effective. You could of course just use the back of a fork, but I think that was quicker. Then we need one cup of all-purpose flour. Now I'm using cups for this because that's what the recipe states. I'm not going to try and convert that. I know people in the UK will probably want weights and measures for this, but Cup measures are not hard to come by. I just think it's useful to have one in the kitchen so that you can do a recipe like this without adjusting anything. Exactly the same as I would recommend people who don't have a cheap set of digital kitchen scales to get those. And I think it's worth having both things if you're interested in cooking recipes that other people have created. Anyway, so there's our cup of flour. We want one tablespoon of white sugar. Well, I've got kind of golden caster sugar, so that will have to do. So one tablespoon of sugar. Two teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, one quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and this is a half teaspoon measure, so we'll fill that up about halfway. So now we need one beaten egg, one cup of milk, and two tablespoons of vegetable oil, it says. I'm not going to use vegetable oil, I've got some nice goat's butter here. I like trying different things, and Butter is one of the things I like to just see what's available and grab some. So I've got this goat's butter. It's a bit different. It's not different in the way that goat's cheese is different. It's just a creamy, pale coloured butter that's really rich and delicious. So rather than two tablespoons of vegetable oil, I'm going to put in what I think is about two tablespoons of butter. I think that's probably a little bit under, actually. I would say maybe that much again. I think that's about two tablespoons of butter. I'm sure we don't need to be clinically precise here. I'm just going to melt that in the microwave so that we can add it into the batter. And you can probably see that's a paler colour than you would normally expect from butter. I had some of this on my toast this morning actually and it just tastes like really nice creamy rich milky butter. It says to beat the egg but I'm just going to put that straight in and beat it in the mix. It'll be fine. So one cup of milk. I'll just break up the egg a little bit first. Okay, and in with the milk. And it's this is one of these things where you just chuck everything in and give it a good mix. So it's a nice simple recipe. And that's really as far as that needs to be mixed. You don't want to over mix it or else the flour might develop a bit too much and it could go tough. Or well, that's what people say anyway. So that is sufficiently mixed now. So nice big non-stick pan. And I am going to use vegetable oil on here because butter will tend to burn. So I'm just going to use a neutral vegetable oil for this. I've also got my big skillet heating here, which the uh, reason for that will become apparent in a moment. Okay, the pan I think is coming up to temperature now. And so I'm going to try and be as neat as I can with this because I want some photogenic pancakes. I've already made a mess. So just going to put some nice round blobs of pancake batter in there. I'm not going to overcrowd the pan. We'll See how this goes. I'll do two to start with. Nice, we can see that baking powder is working in there because those bubbles are coming from the baking powder breaking down under the heat, which is going to create a rise in these pancakes. And as soon as I can see the edges here starting to sort of brown and dry out a little bit, that's going to be when I flip them. Bubbles coming up all over now, which is good. Okay, and I can just see underneath there some browning taking place. So let's get underneath there and give it a flip. Here we go, ready, steady, go. 
They're a little bit too big to flip neatly, but they're working okay. I think we could bring the heat down a bit. Just gonna get underneath them, make sure they don't stick to the pan. Let's just have a look on the other side. Yeah, I would say that's as close to ready as it's gonna get. So those can come out. Let's get rid of those bits of burnt dough so we have a nice clean start for the next pancakes. Okay, gonna try three smaller ones this time. Right, and then while those are cooking, I mentioned this pan here, didn't I? So this pan, just put a bit of oil in there. I've got some streaky bacon that we're gonna fry off and get nice and crispy. None of your fake bacon this time, this is the real thing. And I think I'm just gonna cook like four rashes of this bacon. The bacon press, I'm gonna keep that nice and flat. I'm gonna turn that down a bit because I can already see toasting happening here. Getting the temperature level <laughs> right for these is really, really fiddly, I find. It's constant adjustment. I suppose a heavy based pan would probably be better because that will just tend to level out any little fluctuations in temperature. But we've got bubbles all over now. I'm going to get under there and flip that. Okay, going to finish these pancakes off. There's a few other ingredients I want to add to my pancake stack, so just going to get that prepared now. Now, as you already guessed, I'm having bacon with my pancakes, but I also want a tiny, tiny little bit of chili, I think. So I've got this homegrown chili, it's really wonky, and I'm just gonna get the thinnest, tiny shavings of chili. These are quite hot chilies. So the thinnest little shavings of chili. This bacon is actually cooked super, super crispy, far more crispy than I would normally enjoy bacon. But I feel like as a garnish or a topping on this kind of dish, it really needs to be done like this. Time to do something with these pancakes. So I'm going to make a little stack of them here. I'm going to add some more banana. So some more little slices of banana. And another pancake. don't know if you can hear my stomach rumbling. I certainly can. One more pancake. A bit more banana, looking good so far. A nice scoop of, I've got some clotted cream ice cream here. This is proper hard ice cream. Now, pancake syrup, you could have maple syrup on this, but I've got my fake honey syrup that I made. So I think I'm gonna have some of that on here. And then not forgetting those little pieces of chili. And finally, couple of nice rashes of bacon. How about that? Does that look good? I think it does. But of course the question is what's it going to taste like? So bacon is just beautifully crisp and brittle. I'm going to cut down, try and get a little bit of everything I think if I can, especially that chili with the ice cream. So we've got kind of hot ice cream and bacon here. Here we go, a bit of everything. Oh my word. Yeah, that's good. Now, you might be thinking that some of these things don't go together. And, well, all I can tell you is they do for me. A combination of salty, sweet, savory, sticky, creamy, soft and fluffy, all at the same time. There's just so much going on. Got a little bit of punch from the chili. It's got the creamy sweetness of the ice cream and the bananas. It's got the crunchy saltiness of the bacon. Even the smokiness of the bacon combines really well here with the other ingredients. 
This video is a collaboration with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. He's going to take the same banana pancake recipe. He's going to try and adapt it to the ingredients he's got available to him there. Please do check out his video and support him. You'll find his video in this card if you're on a card enabled platform. If not, there's a link in the video description. I'm really pleased with that. I'm not at all surprised that was a good combination, but it is a combination, all of those things together that I've never tried before. I don't regret a single part of that. That was delicious. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.